Hey guys, Cory here. Um, so we're about to do another little, uh, the final video actually on the uh, the server. Um, so I ended up having to use it um, for another project. So I did a whirlwind of developments on it, and there's been a lot of commits to my GitHub on it uh, in the past couple uh, weeks. And I didn't have time to make a video to update it. So uh, we're going to uh, on this final video, and it's totally, it's completely done. I ended up finishing it and adding in a, a lot of features. I'm going to list those off right now. I added in uh, passwords um, that you can add in whenever you want, and automatically hashes them, stores them hashed and whatnot. And you can also run it without the password. So if you don't want to run with passwords, that's totally fine. It works still without that. It detects whether or not you don't have to like put in uh, you know special commands when you're uploading it. Um, and I added in uh, a modular client. So I just made a class for the client now as well. Uh, just if you're running it in password mode, it's easier uh, because then you can start up client and throw in passwords like that. And you can, um, uh, <clears throat> you can uh, use it in other uh, programs because it doesn't print statements or anymore. You can just, uh, it doesn't ask you for input you know, like the other one did. Uh, that was for testing purposes. This one, you just tell it, send this. And then you can check the results that it got back to see if it was successful or not. So if you want, like you don't have to access those results or anything. Uh, then I added in um, uh, support for all file extensions work on it now. They did before. I thought they didn't because of a little error that we'll talk about on why it was getting weird. Um, so I had to restructure the file writing command. But every, any, even if your computers know the file extension, it'll work. Uh, so that's, that's good. So let's get into it. Um, so let's start with the server. The server is pretty much identically the same, except for this little chunk of code in here. Okay, so what it does, uh, okay, so when I'm hashing passwords, so how passwords are normally stored is you do something called a hash on them. Uh, because you don't even, when someone's trying to guess passwords and say, you know, they, they, you don't even want them to know the length of your passwords. So what hashing does is it'll take a password of any size from one letter to a hundred letters and turn it into a 26 letter uh, irreversible operation. So you can't just undo things. And it's just a jumble of nonsense. Um, and you store them like that. So if anyone were ever to get that file, it's just a bunch of nonsense. Uh, the trick that your server does, though, is that when someone puts in a password, it rehashes that and compares that to it. Because you know, if you put in the same password twice, it, you'll get the same hashes out. Um, but that's led to dictionary attacks where people have huge dictionaries of known common passwords and they just try it one after the other over and over and over and over again until they crack it. So to prevent that, every kind of server has their own salt. You take someone's password, you hash it, and then you take something called a salt and you hash it and you combine them. Right, or you can combine them into one and then hash it. I mean, you know, it really depends. And uh, oh, actually, yeah, you want to combine them first and then hash it because if you combine the two hashes, you'll get a 52 length thing. You could still do it that way. Oh, let me plug in my charger. Whoops. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Ah. Uh. So yeah, that's a way to prevent dictionary attacks because every server has their own random salt that nobody knows about. Uh, it, it great defense against dictionary attacks. So, uh, and you don't want to store your passwords in plain text, by the way, just please, just don't, don't ever do it. So, uh, so what we do here is if you want to run it in password mode, it, my salt here is Scooter. I'm obviously going to change that for this. Scooter was my first cat, so it's easy to remember. Uh, passed away recently. Good cat, but. Um, so what it's going to do uh, to detect whether it wants to run in passwords mode, it's going to check if the same directory of... So I imported OS. I, I changed all my import statements to one line because we were starting to import a lot of them. Um, and you'll see a couple new libraries up there. Uh, and I didn't want to keep uh, just pumping them out up there. Um, let's check. I have another video rendering. I don't want it to pop up in the middle. All right. So um, what it does is it checks if that file exists. So OS.path is file. It checks if this file exists. If it exists, it goes, oh, they want me to use passwords. If it doesn't, it'll just say passwords equals none, and that's going to trigger a mode where it doesn't use passwords. And that's mainly for the client handler, because remember, he's the guy that's doing a lot of this stuff. So it'll go with open passwords, just read it. So it'll read them all. And so what you do when you make this passwords file, you enter it as plain text. Okay, so I'm going to, if I have my little text file, you know, I'm just going to open up Notepad here. 
I'm just gonna put like maybe banana as a password. Hope I spelled banana right. Muffins is another password, stuff like that. You know, you're gonna make this, save it as passwords.txt, and you're like, whoa, you just told me never to save things as plain text in my passwords. I know, I totally. But can, when you want to enter new passwords, it's gonna be convenient for you to um, uh, enter them as plain text and have the server hash it. So what it does is it reads, it's gonna read, I'm gonna give you, before we go through the code, I'm gonna let you, you know, run you through what it does. Uh, maybe like Popo, I don't know. Um, these are my passwords, right? So it's gonna come in, it's gonna read each one of these if it detects the file exists. And it's gonna hash them into just Oops, boop, boop, just like, you know, hashes, right? Just random words, like do 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 boop, 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 like that, right? It's gonna hash them in. Unfortunately, my internet's down, so I can't run the server and show you this, but it's gonna hash them, and then I add a little thing where it's gonna put this colon H on the end, telling it it's hashed, right? Because when it, uh, you rerun the server, and it finds your passwords.txt file, if you put in a hash to be hashed, it will assume that's a real password, and change it up again, but it just changed the passwords that you had and that, that's terrible, that was an error I was running into. I would set up passwords, you know, I'd go through certain multiple tests and then during the test it would rehash my already hashed passwords, essentially making new passwords that I did not put in. And I was like, why aren't my passwords working? So I put this colon H, so when it, the server comes up and it's going to your passwords.txt, it'll look in here and if it sees this colon H on the end of a line, It'll say, oh, that's already a hashed password. I'll leave it alone. So example, say this is my passwords.txt file. And I want to enter a new password. Because say I have a new user, that you know, guy that's going to be using my server. And he's like, I can't remember these. I'm like, oh, hey, maybe your password is going to be something like, uh, well, I don't know, maybe uh, Blue Dude. I don't know, some, some random. Don't know where that came from. But it would be Blue Dude, right? So all I have to do is open up passwords.txt and put this in. And next time I run the server, It'll ignore these two guys, automatically boo -ba -doo -ba -doo, just fake hash, hash it, and do that. Okay, so it's really easy to enter in new passwords like that. Okay, and prevent it from rehashing already hashed things. Okay, so you see right here, it'll read all the passwords, it'll strip off the new line characters, just in case there are any. Uh, because it'll, it'll read all the new lines, it'll make an array of them, and just strip off all the new line stuff. It'll make a temporary list to hold the, uh, the guys that's going to hash because it's going to rewrite them back to the file. So for x and self.passwords, because we bring all the passwords in here, uh, the passwords are all the hash guys. It's going to, uh, if they already end with an h, colon h, right? it's going to append them, just append them to templates. They're already hashed, ignore it. If they don't end with colon h, they're not hashed. So what we'll do is we'll append uh, what you do is this is hashlib, it's a library that does hashes for you. And what it does is it takes in bytes, it takes in bytes of a string. And it will uh, turn it, it'll hash the bytes. So you'll see here, I'll just encode my password as bytes, but I'll also take my salt. And you'll see that's why I encoded my salt already. Okay, Just so I don't need two encode statements here. So I just add my salt together with the encoded x bytes, or the password bytes. Uh, so you call this function, and then you just do hex digest on it, and that'll complete it and turn it into a complete hash. In fact, I can probably run a little example for you here, uh, real fast, to show you what a hash looks like. So if I go import hash lib, okay, and I go hash lib dot. Let me look at the code. MD five. I'll just go like maybe it'll be my name. Corey dot encode UTF eight dot hex digest. So make sure that's good. Hex digest. Yep. Okay. You'll see that come out. And that's a hash password right there. Okay. Well, it's a bit longer than twenty six. I must have gotten my number wrong on no, maybe that is. I don't know. But that's what a hash password looks like. And so that's what this is, line of code is doing. It's turning into a hash for it. Okay. So it's turning into a hash and then appending that colon H. And then uh, it'll uh, pump, it'll, it's appending it to the list. So that we have the hash version and that colon H to signify. This is a hash. Don't touch it anymore. 
Okay, and then we set our passwords equal to that temp list. Okay, because that's everybody hashed. Okay, because first we put self.passwords equal to all the unhashed and maybe previously hashed guys, and then uh, self.passwords is the updated guys, hashing anyone that wasn't hashed and just anybody that is. So when we have this colon h though, and the salt, you got to remember when you're checking somebody's passwords, you got to remember to add that salt in and then hash it the passwords. And you have to remember to uh, also ch remember to check it uh, with that colon H there, because that colon H is on the end of a password. So you can either cleave off the colon H when checking, or just add a colon H to the passwords coming in, which is what I chose to do, just because it was easier for me. Depends on the situation. If we open back up that passwords.txt file, remember with the with open statement, we don't need to do file close. It takes care of that for us. It's rarely memory efficient. Love it. Um, we take every password in our password. And in our passwords list, and then we just write it to the file and put in a new line character so they're not all just appended one after each other. And that's why we have the strip up here. Okay. Otherwise, no passwords. That's the only thing that we got going on. With the server, I think that's the only thing that's changed. Now we're going to move on to the client handler and see what he's up to. All right. All right. So when we run them, we're going to first check uh, if the self dot passwords is equal to none, uh, or, or if not equal to none in this case. Um, so if it's not equal to none, so now I gotta tell you something. Is that when the client starts up now, he immediately sends a password to the server, right? It's kind of part of their handshaking under the hood, right? Because I, I said in a previous video, I don't want to change how the user uses this much when I update it, but I want to give them more freedoms or more protections that they can explore if they want to, but not change the base interface. Because I mean, every time there's like an iOS update, I'm like, oh my god, everything's different. Oh, uh, you know, it's massively. I mean, I just updated iOS 10 from like iOS 7. Like, I, oh man, uh, big, big update for me. I like the GIFs, but I'm getting used to a lot of other things. Um, but yeah. So, um, if password is not none, it means it's going to accept passwords from the client, right? Uh, and it'll go message equals self dot receive data. So, you know, it just takes in the data, just receives it from the client, and then it hashes that, but it hashes it by adding in the salt, and then adds in that colon H, and then checks if it's in the list of passwords. So it just takes the user passwords, once again, it, it adds in the salt, it encodes it and then adds in that colon H because remember we add that we added that to all of our hash passwords and checks if it's in passwords. If it's in, it's good. Self dot send data password accepted. Else we raise exception password not accepted. It will abort the client handler. The client when it receives this is made to go oh it wasn't accepted and it cuts itself off too as well. So make sure you put in the right password. <laughs> it's not like a oh try again thing. It's more like abort password not accepted. Uh, then things are pretty much the same except for a couple things. Remember, I have the passwords.txt folder on the server. That means if somebody is trying to upload or download files, they can see the passwords.txt uh, file. That's bad. That's really bad. Because then they can just download or upload their own passwords file. If they uploaded their own passwords file that overwrote it, they know all the passwords, and anybody with control of the server no longer has any passwords that they can, you know, that they know that they can use. Uh, they've effectively garnered control. You know, that's, that's horrendous, right? Uh, so what we do is whenever they try to upload a file called passwords.txt or download a file called passwords.txt, we say, no, you're not allowed that. That is not good. Uh, and for any sneaky things, they could copy the file as another name. They could copy passwords.txt and then rename it something. You know, any, any command that has to do with password.txt, so if any command has to do with that, done. One last attack they could do is maybe they remove the directory that it's in. Boom, no password.txt file, it's an open server. Welcome in. Just come on in. No, no, no. it's bad. Uh, they could remove it and then recreate it, put in password. No, it's bad. So what they could do, uh, so they could remove the directory. So any uh, remove directory command is also gone. Now you could have a table that if somebody puts in the right password gives them administrative access. I've done this on another version too. Gives them administrative access that allows them to do these commands because say you want to remotely update the passwords file. That's something you may want to do. 
So maybe you put in a super secret password that gives you uh, admin access that allows you to do that. All right, and you just check if their password is equal to the super mega admin password. It allows it. Which I may add in to this one as well. So you see uh, things are almost the same. Uh, before, if we had the right quit, the client would just end, but we forgot to make it so the client handler would also end. So if message is right quit, self that quit equals true, um, terminate connection. Um, and it, it sends, well, the, the client would actually, well, this guy would terminate, but the client would terminate because of an error because he would try to read in these results and he wouldn't get anything back. So now we just have it, self that results equals terminated connection. We send it back to the client and he prints it. Or if you're doing the modular version that you can include another code, if you read self.results equals terminating connection, then you go, oh, my client's over. I should throw an error in my own code as well if I'm using the client for things. Okay. Um, pretty self. Let me see that video's going to pop up. Ooh, it may pop up soon. Um, okay. Now, you see in the download file and upload file, you see passwords.txt. You do not have, if that's in, if file name is equal to that, felt out results, you do not have access to that file. You do not have access to that file. And that's in the client as well. If the client detects you doing that as well, or I'm actually skip the downloading file uh, part and just jump right down to waiting for these results to be sent back to him. Um, because if he begins his file, you'll see if he begins his file uh, kind of like uh, downloading after requesting this, He'll actually download a text file called passwords.txt that has this inside of it, which I don't really want to happen. Uh, and if somebody were to go in and change the code for their client and try to be able to allow themselves to do it, that will happen again. So we put it in both places as kind of a double protection thing. I didn't have it just in the client code because if somebody you know changes that in the client code and tries to connect to my server, the server will still itself not allow you access, and it'll actually cause an error in your program you may not understand uh, unless you know that fact. So. Uh, so uh, downloading and uploading files safe. So if self that results, so if file name is equal to passwords.txt, cut it out. Otherwise, just read the, you know, receive the file, send the file like normal. Okay. Uh, otherwise, right down here, when we normally pipe our command to the command line, if passwords.txt is in their message, so if they're affecting it in any way, self that results equals you do not have access to that file. If removed dir is in message.lower, I just turn everything to lowercase just in case they uh, command sometimes. I don't, I'm, I don't remember if commands work in uppercase. I forget. I think that's why I put this in. Because commands may work in uppercase. So I turn the message to lowercase just so I can always catch it, right? I don't want to sneaky. They turn this to uppercase and I don't catch it because I'm looking for a lowercase version. Uh, self that results, command not allowed. Otherwise, good to go. The one thing, though, is to add another layer of protection. I don't want them to even know where the password.txt file is. I don't even want them to know that it exists, right? So what I do is, in self.results, right? Okay, I'm, I'm returning the results like normally, but I check if self.results has passwords.txt in it, I'm going to replace it with a random name, like new text document.txt, just to, like, fake them out, right? Because it's not a huge file. And maybe... You know, I have a little text file that has like nothing in it or whatever. You know, and if they if they try to download or upload a new text document, you know, if you try to download a new text document, they say that doesn't exist. And if they try to upload it, it'll, you know, it'll make a new copy of it, and they'll think, oh, that's an error. I just re-uploaded the same document. But so I just put this in here as an extra layer of secrecy, right? Uh, which is really fun to really fun to play around with. Uh, because when you return, if I do the dir command, you'll see where there should be passwords.txt. New text document.txt comes up, and that's a really fun thing to look at. Uh, I felt really sneaky and malevolent doing that. But uh, And the reason I have self.results equals to itself, that, that this doesn't actually change the string. It just returns the version of that string changed. Um, well, what if passwords.txt isn't in the results? Will this throw an error? Actually, no. If it's not in it, it won't even throw an error. It just won't replace anything. So that's really convenient. It saves us some error handling. Okay. Um, if there's just an exception, just send any connection due to errors. Um, this basically happens if you put in the wrong password or just really, it's just a catch-all for anything. And then we have this finally statement. So if they end normally, 
or if they end due to errors, they'll just remove themselves from the server's connections, uh, just like before. Um, let's get to the receiving and send files, and that'll be it for this guy. Okay, let's do send file first. So same as before, we lock the file, then we read the binary data, we make a chunk, and now I've done one other thing. I've done this self.con.receive. So I've made it, so before, if they would send chunks, chunk after chunk after chunk after chunk, sometimes it would, uh, in large files, it wouldn't work very well, it would like, overfill the buffer, or they would get, uh, one guy would try to read 1024, and it just wouldn't fit right. The messages would get appended on the end of each other, and sometimes it, it, it worked all right most of the time, but every once in a while I, I had some weird errors where things would get dropped, and I never 100% figured out why, but this works. Uh, this this is just this is just the word uh, ready encoded. So when the other guy has received the chunk and is ready for the next chunk, he just sends ready back encoded. Uh, I don't do anything with that. It's just a way to keep going. See, so uh, he'll read it. He'll receive ready. He'll send the chunk, and then it just continues on. If the size is less than ten twenty four. I got rid of the whole done thing because it kept getting appended on the end of things and it was just an extra complicated step. So if the like, size of chunk is less than 1024, just break because we know we're done. That's the final, if the size is less than 1024, we didn't read 1024, meaning there wasn't 1024 bytes left, meaning that's the end of the file. Um, so if I only read 10 bytes, I know, you know there's only a little chunk left. Let's just send that guy, break. Right. Or he sends it and then he checks the size. Right? And then if there is no errors, file downloaded, and he sends that to the client when they're done. And he releases the lock. Returns. Uh, this return is, uh, sh doesn't need to be here, but I kept having a weird thing where the exception would be triggered after this was done. Don't know why, but I just, this seemed to fix it. Just a little bug or something. Um, there's an exception uh, due to maybe uh, th reading the file. Maybe the file is just a junk file for some reason. Uh, it'll wait for them to send ready, and then it'll release the file and send error.encoded. Um, so note that the other guy can't just check if the, if the size is less than 1024. He has, if it's less than 1024, he has to check whether it's the error message, right? Which we did last time, right? But the thing was, is I was trying to, the, the reason why text files were only working is because I was trying to decode the bytes and compare it to this error message, right? Oh, this file is about to pop up. Oh no. Let's just I'll actually start playing. Let me get out of that. All right, cool. Uh, so I was in. I was decoding the bytes being sent and comparing them to this error message as a string. Now, what what the problem was is when I was sending, say, images. It was trying to decode the images as strings, which it just was getting caught in an infinite loop because it was like, I don't, I don't see a, a null, because strings on the byte level have a null terminating byte, and if they don't reach it, it just keeps going and going and going and going. So it's basically trying to decode, I think, my entire like, computer contents <laughs> as, a, as a string. It, it never found the, the null terminating section, so it wouldn't work. So instead, I, the solution, and that's, that's why I didn't think the file extensions were working, when in reality they were, and it was that decoding on my part that was ruining it. So in reality, where we are, I can encode error.encode, like this, and then check if it's inside that tiny chunk sent. Uh, because now I'm comparing bytes to bytes. That's okay. Now when I compare bytes to bytes by encoding error, uh, I can accurately determine whether there's an error message. So I, I send this error.encode, and then my results are the error that I encountered. Okay, and I send those to the other guy. I added this instead of just saying, check if the file exists or whatever. Now the client can have a better picture of what's going on on the server, why there was an error. Everything else is the exact same. Uh, just everyone, you'll see that instead of just sending, hey, you encounter an error, you'll see I sent the actual error message. Receive file. Okay. I lock the file. Great. I open it as right, uh, as right binary. Okay, because I'm going to receive the file. I'm going to write it to my version of the file. I'm just going to make an empty byte string for data. 
error is false. If this is set to true, it'll trigger and uh, it'll know something got messed up. The only way this will trigger is if the sender had an error, right? This will trigger if they send that error message. See that in a sec. So while true, so send ready dot encode UTFA and then receive the chunk. Uh, so it'll always send that ready and then receive the chunk over and over. If the size of the chunk is less than 1024, we check if it's an error. So if error dot encode, here's what I was talking about, we encode error and we check if it's inside of the chunk. Error is equal to true, we break. Okay. Because uh, we're done, we're done. If there's an error, we're, just, we're done here. Otherwise, data plus equals chunk, break. Because if it's less than 1024, we just add in that final chunk and we know we're done, we break. Otherwise, if it's not less than 1024, we're just going to add the chunk to our overall data and then cycle it back here for the next chunk. Okay? If not error. So if there's no error, just say results equals file uploaded, all good, bro. Write the data to the file, end of that. Otherwise, it means there was an error. So we're going to close the file. We're going, this will get rid of that bug because when they're uploading a file and we made that nice fake empty file to prepare to get it and write it to that, um, we prepare it and there's an error before where, oh, whoops, there's an error. Uh, and there's an error, stop it, but it wouldn't delete that file. In fact, it tried to, but it wouldn't. And I figured out the error was that the file was still open because we had it open, ready to write to, right? Just grab the chunk, put it in, grab the chunk, put it in. Um, and since it was open, we couldn't, there was an error in the background that wasn't breaking my code, so I couldn't see that, but it was just kind of ignoring it and continuing along. I couldn't remove it because it was open. So now I have the, because it's inside of this with open, you know. So now I just say file.close it, I say close it, then remove it, because there was an error, I don't want to upload this junk file, because you don't want junk data, go remove it. Then my results is equal to, uh, uh, I take the chunk, I, uh, uh, yeah right, they send the error message, um, the server won't hear Oh yeah, so, so when the server has an error sending the file, he just sends the, this error, right? And then he sends the string in his results because, right, when stuff is over, the client waits for the results from the server and the server will send the string. On the other hand, there's not that relationship between the client and the server. So when the client has an error, he will send the full error, you know, but he'll also send his error message, Right, he sends them all as one. Right, so this is the first time you don't see their their functions exactly mirroring each other, and that's due to the that 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 thing. Whenever a, fu a command is done and executed, whether it was executed right or there was an error, they meet up at the end, and the server sends that update of the results. Was there an error? Did it happen correctly? What happened? We don't have that with the client. The client never gets his say in on what happened. So when he sends his error message, and that's why I check if it's in the chunk. Not if it is the chunk, if it's in the chunk, because there's that error message tacked on. So he'll replace wherever error was with nothing. So we have the clean error message, no weird custom money, money, money error thing. And then he makes that result that uh, and sends it back. Because when the client throws an error, he'll send it to the server, and it'll be bounced back for the user to see. Okay. Uh, that's that. Everything else is completely the same, except you'll just see, it'll just, you know, say actual error messages now instead of just custom ones. So, let's go to the client. Let's go to the client first. Okay. Uh, just the same, you see, he just opens the file write binary for his receive file. Data is equal to bytes, just makes an empty byte string. This is another way of making an empty byte string. Either one works. It's really whatever is more readable for you. Chunk.receive 1024. Chunk.decode UTF-8 is equal to done. Uh, oh, this is B client. Whoops, this guy. I have the wrong B client open, actually. I might get because I uploaded it from another computer. This done shouldn't be here anymore. I have the wrong B client. That's okay. All right, we'll just skip over to the full client. I don't even use I don't I don't use B client anymore. I use this guy now. Um, okay. Oh, yep. And you see these here. So these here, I was debugging earlier, and I just wanted to find where some of the bugs were by just saying, uh, finding in the code where it would stop. So if I would see a four printed out and not a six, I know it 
got caught up in here. So let's just get rid of those guys. I thought I got rid of them already, but there was a couple I missed. Sorry. A couple I missed, apparently. That looks all done. Okay, yeah. Perfect. All right. Got to re-upload that to my GitHub now. All right, so... Here's the new client, okay? So he initializes, he gets his IP, and he gets his port. There's defaults if you don't want to just, if you're just running tests and you don't want to put these guys in every time. And password by default is equal to none. Okay? So if password's not equal to none, it'll send, uh, if, if, you know, we, we saw that if the if passwords of the server were equal to none, it would just, uh, it would ignore that and just wait for the guy to connect. So if the passwords are not on the client side as well, it'll skip the whole password phase and just automatically connect. But if there are passwords enabled, it'll send that password, and its results will be what it gets back. And if not in self the results, it just checks if basically, I didn't want to type out the whole password not accepted, so I just checked, is not in the results? If so, raise the exception, password not accepted. Otherwise, we're good to go. And you'll see uh, if you send uh, a password when the server doesn't uh, 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 request it, you'll also see that there won't, it'll just send back the, this command is not recognized, uh, but it'll send it in lowercase. So this won't trigger it as well, and your guy will just continue into the normal operation mode, thinking he's been accepted. So if you accidentally send a password to a server that doesn't request it, you'll just get weird results for the first time, saying this isn't a known command and then you'll be in normal operation mode. So it's okay. So if you accidentally forget that. So don't worry. So receive file. So let's get to this guy. So he encodes the data, okay? Just to make that little byte string ready to go. Uh, see, I did it this way too. He makes the error false, because remember if the sender uh, has an error, he'll send that, that custom error command over here. And we get ready to read it by just opening it up, making our own version of the file, get ready to write binary to it, and we prepare. So we send we're ready. We're ready for the chunk. Receive the chunk. If it's less than 1024, we just check if it, if it is the error. Well, we'd also check if it's in here, but we could just say equals in this case, since they're not sending anything more if it's an error. Uh, I'll just keep it as in. Error is equal to true if we got an error and we break out because we don't want to write any of the data of the corrupted file. Otherwise, we know we're done because the size was less than the intended size. So we just add the chunk to data, and we break out. Otherwise, we just add the chunk to the data, we send ready, and prepare for the next guy. If there was no error, we just write the file, the data to the file. Uh, otherwise, uh, we close it and remove it, because there was an error. We don't like that. You see these are a little shorter, because we don't have any of that self.result stuff. <clears throat> what am I doing on time? Uh, we'll finish in time. So send file, okay, so self.file name, whatever. We just uh, open up the file, read the bytes of it. We just wait for them to say ready. We, uh, <clears throat> we read the file, we send it over. If it's less than the intended size, we just break out. Otherwise, we just take in the exception. We receive that they're ready. Because remember, if, we're, we, 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 if we come in here, uh, this, this will trigger, let me run you through an example of when this will trigger here. So if we try to open this file and it doesn't exist, well, the other guy thinks we're about to send the file, right? So we'll jump down here, we'll receive their, hey, we're ready for the file, and then we'll tell them, psych, file doesn't exist, it's wrong. So we still have to put this receive there, even if there is an exception, right? Because the main exception you'll find is right here when we try to open a file that doesn't exist. If we open a file that doesn't exist, they'll still be sending us that ready, because they don't know it doesn't exist, and they think it's coming. So they'll send ready, so we just receive to get that out of our little way, and then we send them, because they're, they're going to be waiting for us to receive that, so we receive it, it's all good, bro, but by the way, it doesn't exist, okay? Receive data and stuff are all the same. The only thing I've changed is if uh, file name, uh, they're just the same, instead of send, putting in the con now, since we're a class, we can just use self.con self.con.receive and such, okay? Uh, it just makes it useful. Uh, send command is pretty short. It's almost the exact same. Uh, if passwords.txt is in the file name when we're downloading, we just skip the receive file part. Uh, if it's not in file, you know, if it's, not, if it's not in there, we'll receive the file. 
If it's not in there, we'll also send the file if we want to upload things. If it is in there, we're going to skip this and wait for the results. That'll tell us we don't have access. If you were to change this, you'd get a passwords.txt file, but it would say you don't have access because that's what they sent and we were expecting things to put in there. Um, so if somebody were to change this, trying to get a hold of that passwords file, thinking, oh, this is all that's preventing me from getting it, they're in for a, a, a surprise. Um, so self.results is equal to self.received data. Uh, yeah. And then for the if name equals main for the testing, I just put an argument parser in here. And I just add an argument for the IP address, the port, and the password. Uh, if these are all, n if I don't care if the password is none, because I handle that, but if IP is none and port is none, I can't just put in none and none here, here and here, because uh, that'll overwrite the default value. So I just set these 127 and 5000. This only really comes into play if you're opening it from the command line. Or if you're opening it from the command line, you're just doing run. So, um, so that's basically the new client. Um, it works really spiffy. Let me see if I, my server, my internet's being weird on this one. I couldn't record it on my big computer back there. Uh, it's on webcam on there. I've tested it pretty darn extensively and things are working pretty well. I've gotten, I've sent, uh, I made a tool to resize images and stuff so I was just resizing them. I sent like half a, half a gig image, you know, and it handled it like that. I've sent fake files, I've downloaded half a gig stuff, totally working. Um, I didn't go bigger because it would take a while for me to resize that photo, but well, let's, let's see if it's running. Hopefully it'll run. Okay, that's working. I'll find this client. Where's it saved? Desktop. Let's try and find it. We'll see if my internet's working, because I, I, I would like to show you guys. CD Python Project master python client ooh they're in the same folder which is bad so let me let me do some real fast let me go into here let me go into desktop let me go in here let me grab the client let me throw them in my documents I don't want I, to show that it's working I obviously don't want them in the same and I'll make um, what should I download? I, I've even downloaded and uploaded Python programs from the, uh, the stuff, which was fun. That was, that gave me a kick. Documents, Python. Oh, whoops, that's not the one I wanted. Oh, wow, connected, that's weird. Okay. Okay, CD documents. Python clients.py. Okay, awesome. So we're there. I didn't put in any passwords. I don't have any passwords.txt files, so I should skip that. So let's see if hopefully it's working. Oh, it's out of CD. Yeah, error and changing directory. Directory man access. So it looks like it's doing well. Not recognized. Perfect. Let's get a dir command in here. Um, do, 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 all right, so let's download file, and let's download. Let's just download the client handler, just to be ironic. Let's tell the client handler to download itself. File downloaded. So you'll see. Let's see if we can find him somewhere in here. Where would he be? B client handler, somewhere in here. Client. Oh yeah, here he is, client handler, right? He got downloaded. Oh no, that's in yeah, that's in documents. Oh no, that's not in there. Hmm, somewhere in here. Should probably I should probably make him his own file so he's not Ooh, I have some of these images on here. So let's upload some of these images actually. So let's do that. Let's upload that'll be easier for us to see in an empty file. Upload file. Um let's do fo dot png, it's just from random. Uploaded. File uploaded, fantastic, okay, that was wearing me. Um, desktop, let's go right into here, final version, and we see phone, if we open it, hopefully my computer's not, yeah, it doesn't really know how to open it. Ha <laughs> ha, uh, photo gallery, would that work? Yeah, 
yeah, okay, it worked. <laughs> ah, sweet. So we uploaded, yeah, it's working. We uploaded uh, stuff like that. We uploaded, we just uploaded image. So that's totally working. Um, great. Uh, let's do this. Let's go download file. Even though there's no passwords file, it should still passwords.txt. You do not have access to that file. Let's go upload passwords.txt. You do not have access to that file. Let's go passwords.txt. You're just going to send it. You don't have access to that file. Uh, passwords.txt. You do not have access to that file. Uh, let's see if remove dirt is working. Command not allowed. Perfect. Okay. All right. So that's all that jazz is working. Um, let's see if we can get an example of passwords.txt working. Um, okay. Passwords. Okay. And let's go banana. Muffin, cool guy. Let's just save that. Okay. And now let's turn off the server. Let's rerun him a little bit. Okay. And let's go into here. Let's open up passwords. And they've all been hacked. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, let's add in one more. What should we add in? Uh, let's go. Uh, Python is fun. Let's go that. Let's be cheesy. Let's be cheesy as hell. Save that. Okay. Uh, and let's once again restart the server. So it should hash that new guy while leaving the others alone. If we pump it in, come on. Desktop. Python Cloud Server Final Version. Passwords. And there we go. It hashed the new guy and re refrained from touching the other ones. Um, so there you go. Um, so that's basically it in action. Um, just going to yeah. So that's it. Uh, working pretty well, I'd say. Um, one final test we can do is pop into client. Just change this real fast because I don't want to do command line arguments. Banana. Right, I put I put in. I, I'm not sure if I spelled banana the same way. So I'm just gonna put a muffin here, and I'm just gonna pop it in. And pop it in. So the server still running? It's not. So it's running. Did I delete passwords file? Shit, I don't remember. Let's put in documents. Oops, it's the desktop. Desktop, Python Cloud Server, final version. I did delete it. Darn. Oh, wait, in time. Alright, I can. Muffin. Great. Great password. Secure. Secure as hell. Perfect. Let's just check if it's hashed. This code is all up online on my GitHub, by the way. If you want to check it out, feel free. I, if you want to, just don't. It's public. Just don't update over the master. And I, I will be oh, totally okay. If you'd like to do some more stuff with it, totally cool with it. So we're going to go into documents, if I can spell it right, that is, python client.py. And it looks like we are accepted because it's good to go. Passion not accepted. Okay, well that's at least good. That didn't accept me if it thought I had a bad password. Um, oh, because I ran it. Oh yeah, put none. Whoops. That's why I didn't work. Well, that's good. It means if we put in a bad password, it, it sent none, which is good. It means it's working. Um, we're just gonna do. We're gonna do this right here. Password is equal to nothing. Because we ran it, the command line thing pumped in none. Because I put no argument for it. So password equals muffin. See, that showed an example of what I was talking about where it can overwrite the default. So the server's still running. Yeah, it said we had a client connect, but they're disconnected now because of obviously password reasons. Uh, hi. Password not accepted. Dude, errors. Why is that? Oh, we're saving, look, we're saving it to the desktop version. That's why. Uh, we're accessing the wrong version. Let's save that to the documents again. Replace it. Yep. All right. Should work now. 
I hope. <laughs> Everything else is working, so might as well get it. Let's go, let's go. Come on, let's get it complete done. Yeah, it works! See, we didn't even have to see the password handshaking behind. See, that goes to my philosophy of updates. Make it better, but try not to change the user interface so much so that they don't have to adapt as much, but your code's getting stronger. So it's totally working now. I accept our password. That's why we're on the file. And you see uh, server, new text document. Look, passwords.txt, hidden right there. It'll be a little whole spiel about it, making it look like a real file. Fan-freaking-tastic. So that's all I got, honestly. Um, works great. You saw I can send multiple file types, downloaded Python files, uploaded images, worked with passwords and whatnot, worked without passwords. Um, and this is one of my short videos. What? So uh, if you have any questions, let me know. If you want to play with the code, it's up on my GitHub, which I will hopefully link in the description if I remember. Um, have fun. Hope you learned something through this playlist. See you later.